Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm gonna to show you a really cool grout within serum that you can make something like this with. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So got my uh, champion hoodie on. You gotta, you gotta admire while you can. But uh, to get right into this, so we're in Serum. Um, we have a kind of effect rack going on. This is what the sound sounds like with everything going on on it. And then if we take off the effects, of course, it doesn't sound as good. But you still have the kind of the basis of the sound. So getting into the Serum preset, which I actually kind of just stumbled upon a couple of these wavetables that I thought was cool. So we are using that pack. I think it was a Bucker or Baker pack uh, from a couple of videos ago. It's free. Download it. I'll link it again if I remember to in this video description. But I'm using some of the wavetables from that. So if you can't get exactly what this sounds like or you're looking for the wavetables, that's why. However, I don't think you have to download it if for some reason you don't want to download the pack because you could probably get a pretty similar one. I know I've seen wavetables that look similar to this within the serum wavetables already so don't be discouraged if you don't have access to the packs for whatever reason so for this first one we are in our tables again from that pack and we are using the off overtones we have two unison on and then we have our detune a little bit below half maybe like a third of the way fm we are modulating that with lfo one we have that coming from b and then we left the level at 100 percent and didn't mess with the phase or the random for our oscillator b we're using this metal wave table this is in the wave table section we have one unison on here the wave table isn't being modulated i just didn't take it off um, i was messing with a, a little bit before i kind of settled on the fm we do not care and then we are just using some bin plus with this wave table position at the starting position level all the way down for the second one we are just using it for the fm capabilities as well as a little bit of that positive harmonic from the bin plus if we move on to filter we are using the flanger minus and this is the part where it's really up to you whether you want a kind of softer or harsher sound this is going to be dependent on which flanger filter you use because we have some that are plus and some that are minus well, duh. so if we go and scroll through some of them You can hear that there is a different harmonic when those play. I'm just going to leave it on the regular one just for the video's sake. I thought this one sounded the best. But we have A and B going here with our cutoff maybe about a quarter of the way. And then we have this going a little bit above halfway for the LFO. For our LFO, we're using the slope here. We have our rate at half. We have it on envelope. And then BPM and the anchor are on. And then we are modulating the macro one here with a little bit of the flanger. So... Basically, I'm just modulating the cutoff up about, I don't know if this is the same one for it, but just about where this is so we can get a cool tone when we cycle through the loop. So this macro is actually being modulated when we get back to the actual project. For our effects, we're using a little bit of hyper. We have this at 15%. We have the unison still at four. Our detune is at 25 and our raise at 40%. I believe I left that untouched. For dimension, we have our size in the middle with just about 19% of dimension. And then we are using some diode one, but the drive is only at 12% and our mix is at 61. This is just to dial in some um, distortion on the kind of top end of the sound so we can get a little bit more crispiness something for our effects that are going after the serum to kind of grab onto and enunciate for the compressor we're using some multiband compression i left all these parameters untouched but for our multiband bands here i have the top at 136 the middle at 140 and then the low i left it at 100 for our mix it's at 100 percent for that and then for our EQ, this is the last part of the Serum preset. The frequency all the way at the bottom, we have this modulating with our LFO. We have the Q at 60%, and then the gain is right in the middle, and we are modulating it, say, about three quarters of the way there. And this is just to get that nice wobble effect. If we go ahead and take off the effects, and we take off this EQ in the patch, it sounds like this. And if we turn it back on you kind of get that like whoa sound in it. So that's a good way to kind of enunciate some vowels within the growl, get a little bit more movement, make it overall sound a little bit more interesting versus just something without it, where there's not as much movement, makes it a little bit more boring if you're listening to it eight times in the drop. Now, getting off of the serum presets, if we listen to this in context, just how it is without going into the effects, this is what it sounds like. It's not terrible, but you can tell it needs some distortion, um, some OTT, etc. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off these effects and we'll move as usual left to right. So OTT without the first one, with the first one, already getting a majority of the kind of grit and the volume that we want. We have our top band going a little bit to the left. Our middle band is just about, what is this? So one, two, three, four, five, six bars stretched. And then this bottom band is over just a little bit past that. 
Hard to explain with this one, but I'll try to zoom in so you can see exactly what I'm doing here. And then we left the output at 10.3, 5.7, 10.3. Didn't mess with the time for this one, and the amount is at 100%. Next, I was messing with the corpus a little bit more. Usually I like to use the pipe or the tube, but if we go ahead and put the dry wet all the way at 100%, you can see what tonality it's adding to the sound. Kind of just like a little bit of, I guess just like a plate. Um, let's move that back down to 42%. We have the plate. We're using the low quality here. This is up to you. If we turn the dry wet back up again, uh, you can see what the different modes do. So if we go high, medium, low, it's almost just like it's putting a filter on the whole sound. Um, we are introducing some high end with this, so I was kind of hesitant to really dial it in too much. But moving on to decay, we have 83 milliseconds here, material at negative 75%. Our width is at 100. Our positions are at 10 and 90 for the left and right. Our tuning is at E2. If you wanted to go down to E1, you could do that as well. It's just adding some more sub frequencies. Didn't really need that. Our bright is at 75%. The in harm is at 100% ratio at 29 and hit at 50. Our spread is right at 0% right in the middle. And then again, that dry width's at 42. Adding one more OTT on top of that, just about the same parameters as the first one. Dial in these to your liking, but again, I'll zoom in. And then we just have a saturator cap off the sound with some time on that second OTT. So we're not getting the artifacting right at the end of the sound. Now, one thing I did notice that I just forgot to do is to add an EQ to EQ out some of the lows, since we are using a separate sub. better there and then we're just using a sub below that and we have some elements going here so i'll go ahead and play one more time so you can see what it sounds like i'll go ahead and show the modulation as well so you can see what that macro is doing with the cutoff of the flange and then i will go ahead and show the pitch bin that's going on with the sound too as well as the pitch bin that's going on with the sub so we're just going up about a semitone here and then we go down two right at the end So I think it's a pretty cool sound. It comes together pretty quickly. Hopefully this gave you a good overview on what the sound was comprised of, as well as the effects that kind of make it up to make it sound better. With all this being said, that's all I have for you in today's video. I hope you learned something from the video and you decide to follow along with the tutorial. If you use something with the preset or do something with it, be sure to tag me in it or send it to me on Instagram. I'd love to see what you come up with. And if you did learn anything, as always, make sure you leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel. It greatly helps me out and it'll recommend my channel to other people as well. So I hope you enjoyed. Thank you for watching and we will see you again in the next video.